Um, so I've been working with kiddos for the last 12 years. Um, and so growing up from the Boys and Girls Club to YMCA to Power on the Uplift to just like like a whole bunch of stuff that I used to do. Like there was a particular camp called Arts in the Hood I used to do in high school that was all ran by young adults and high school students. Um, it was like in a church that we had, it was like 500 kids in this small church, it was crazy. Um, but we would teach, it was a performing arts camp. And so, and we would use what we have. So I had taught Polynesian dancing one year. I had taught um, tumbling and gymnastics, step, photography, poetry, arts and crafts. And so like, just like kind of like growing up and like from like pretty much all of my teenage years, it was just like, I was just always working with kids through the arts naturally. And mm -hmm. so then when I got into college, I was like, I've been doing this for free already. I wasn't yeah. paid anything. Um, I was doing it for free anyway. I had already been in the community. I had always learned uh, servant leadership and what that looked like. And, uh, and, and then, you know, with the arts and stuff. And then um, I was like, I was in college, went through like seven majors. And then I was like, oh, I can create my own degree. Like, are you serious? It was so dope. I was able to create my own degree. It was a whole process. I had to like convince the school that it was like legit. It was legit. Uh, but once I had kind of settled on that name, it, just, it kind of just felt good. Like it just made sense. I was like, oh, I've been doing this for years. And so um, now that transition into being a full-time artist, um, I just, I've been doing this stuff already, you know, naturally. And so I was poured into growing up, I was loved on, I was supported. And as an educator now, as a community organizer now, and as an artist and creative now, it's just like, I'm just kind of like passing the baton now, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm just naturally in the, um, in these spaces that allow me to, to show up in these ways and to support in these ways. And so that's kind of how they kind of blend. They've always been blending. They've been blending since I was 13. I've been finding faces on, on, on Instagram. I'm not gonna hold you. Like, <laughs> or just random people's faces. Like all my art is rooted in my spiritual practice. So mm -hmm. I work with an art of my dead, hence the name Chatty Ancestors, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I'll kind of get these visions in my head and like, you know, I might cross, you know, I might like save a picture here and there, you know, just randomly. And I'll like, I'll randomly get this like vision in my head and I'm like, I have to cut it out. And then, do all these types of things with it. And half the time, I have no idea why I choose the face. I don't know why I choose um, the colors or the themes until afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so I always look at my art as like conversations with God, conversations with the divine. And so a lot of times, actually all the time, it's like literally just this conversation back and forth. Me and the divine as I'm creating this piece. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, I'm like, oh, that's what you meant. <laughs> okay, I see what you did there. And so that's where like a lot of like, that comes from and just like the materials and like I was saying before is like all my work is rooted in my spiritual practice and working with my dead, working with my ancestors. Um and like my understanding with my ancestors are from how I've kind of like explored it. It's like there's ancestors that are past ancestors and there's ancestors that are future ancestors. Mm -hmm. Um and there's also a saying that we are the new ancestors act accordingly. Mm -hmm. And so being able to blend this kind of like world of in like Afrofuturism where we get to imagine um, there's black people in the future, mm -hmm. you know, we're in the future. And while also still honoring the ancient wisdom that mm -hmm. we've been given. And so um, that's kind of how I blend both worlds together. And like I honor the ancestors before, the ancestors now and the ancestors that will be, you know? And so that's kind of I was saying before, it's literally how I communicate. Like a lot of times, um, <clears throat> like my emotions would be all over the place. I think especially as artists, like we're all over the place, oh my God. And a lot of times art was, or has been a way for me to ground the conversations or ground the messages um, and even like ground my intuition in that, you know, with such the process of having to trust myself in my artistic practice and what's happening in that time, it has forced me to like ground. And so meaning that the clarity is now clear between me and the divine, you know? And 
like I look at it as like whenever people come look at my work, it's simply a portal. Like I am simply just a tool and a vessel. And so however one interacts with my work, I've done my part after that. Like it's it's totally up to the viewer how you decide to commune with, with God. Absolutely, yes. Um, there is, there's, you know, I'm always looking at my quotes. Uh, there's this quote that says, the burden of survival is not meant to be carried alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has been community that has loved on me, supported me, and has guided me here. Um, I believe you thrive and you heal in community. And so Redline has always been that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, it's, it's been an honor and it's, it, I'm so grateful to be a part of this community and I get to be loved on and supported and poured into and vice versa. Um, and so and my work is all about that, right? So I'm talking yeah. about, you know, I work with my dad, yo. Like, yeah. it's a community. Like, mm. the spirit team's a whole squad. Yeah. You know, yeah. it takes it takes a village to raise a human. It really does, yeah. you know, um, internally and externally. Um, I think my relationship with my, my dad and my spirit team and the divine has reflected outwards to how my community is. Mm -hmm. um, and the support and the love and like all the things I get to be a part of now reflects that. One of my biggest goals I really want to play in is, or like, I guess you should on all this weird. Um, I want to play with flowers, like mm -hmm. actual real flowers, like floral work, floral mm -hmm. design. I already kind of play with flowers already, you know, in my works. Mm -hmm. um, I want to play with actual flowers. Like I like the concept of um, the dying process of flowers, oh, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. kind of how um, it does its part and it trusts its own process and it, it can go from fresh to dead to just like dried, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I really love that kind of, that process of also like not holding on, mm -hmm. you know, like especially I think as artists, we're always trying to like, hold on to like our works and our art, we're so sensitive about it. And yes. a lot of times our art is just meant to be simply shared. And it's like, I feel like the art, um, whether it's floral work, whether it's, you know, like collage work or whatever the medium is, it is meant for it to have its own kind of like experience. Mm -hmm. And you've done your part. Like mm -hmm. now allow the world, like you're, I feel like we're all responsible for sharing our gifts. Mm -hmm. um, and then, It'll go from there. That's how it goes. And then, so I'm really excited to play with like flowers more um, in that process. And like, I just like playing with flowers. Like I just, I have a blab, who and a half. And it's also <laughs> like a, it's like collaging to me too, in a mm -hmm. way you're like looking at the levels and you're cutting this and you're cutting that, but it's so peaceful. Like I got mm -hmm. to take an Ikebana class mm -hmm. and I was the youngest one in there. Everybody was like 60 plus. And it was like the best thing ever. I was like, is this what people do when they retire? Like I love this. <laughs> and but there is a, there's even like a spiritual act, especially mm -hmm. within like Ikebana, like yeah. there is even like a spiritual um, kind of flow and intuition and intuitive process of like the levels and why we cut, how we cut, why is it like this is this way or this is this way. And so it's, it's, I'm really excited to incorporate like all of this into my work and kind of bring, my art's already really trippy. I want to bring even like people more into it now. Yeah. Like where it's really a lot more interactive where you're touching and you're experiencing and you're in these kind of different ways. And so. so the one we call home series is a series that helped me um, through the grieving process when my grandmother died. Um, so the first woman in the series is my grandmother. Um, and the funny thing is the last woman in the series, so my grandma's middle name was Irene. My middle name is Irene and the last woman in the series, which is exactly 10 in numerology's completion mm -hmm. and beginnings. Um, her name is Irene, which means peace. Um, and so that series allowed me to grieve and accept the process of like when my grandmother died and there's a peace that happened. And so through the series, I was able to interview like just different friends who wanted to honor dope black women in their life, like whether they call them ancestor, friend, um, mother, cousin, whatever, whoever they wanted to honor. I just wanted to honor like those black women and the vastness and the complexity of our journeys and our stories. Um, and so, so that's kind of how like I chose it. And um, again, the same process, like they gave me a picture, like I would interview the person 
Um, they would give me a black and white, or a, a photo, and I would turn there as a black and white, and then I would turn it into a collage. Mm. And um, that is one of my favorite series. It is never for sale. <laughs> People have asked, like, is it, you know, are pieces for sale? I was like, no, um, but it does travel a lot. And so, but it's, it's one of those series where these are women where you typically don't hear our stories. Yeah. And so even if it's in a small cafe, these women's stories get to be heard, you know? And so it's been, um, that series, I love that series. Contemporary art, that's a really good question. Um, in my opinion, it's community. That's, that's what it is. Um, and I know it's like, that sounds kind of wild, but it it is, you know? Like, I think even when we look at the art of community, mm -hmm. you know, um, and to be able to, to be in community and to do what you love, that is a blessing that many of us, a lot of us don't have, you know? And so, um, that's how I look at it. Also, too, from maybe more of like a actual physical standpoint, honestly, it's just you having a good ass time and having fun. Like, we literally live on a flying rock in the middle of space. <laughs> None of this makes sense. There's no rules to this, you know? And so, contemporary art is whatever you want it to be at the time or however it needs to be at the time based off who the artist is and the viewer.